the Supreme Court accepted an abortion case from Oklahoma on Thursday. In question, a 2011 law that required women to use abortion-inducing drugs only under the guidelines approved by the Food and Drug Administration. The state Supreme Court struck down the law, said it was unconstitutional. Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt asked the nation's high court to review that decision. And after agreeing to hear the case, the high court saw an opinion from the Oklahoma Supreme Court about the impact of the law restricting the use of medication. Here with more on this case, our man in Washington, D.C., Chris Castile. Chris, thanks for your time today. Absolutely, Dave. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing this. Pruitt <laughs> said on Thursday it's unusual for the U.S. Supreme Court to review these types of cases, and it sounds fairly complicated to me. Why is that? Um, yeah, it, well, it's unusual for the, the U.S. Supreme Court to take any uh, uh, case, actually. You know, it usually only accepts like one one to two percent of the cases presented to it in a, in a year, thousands of cases, and very few of those are accepted by the court. And the, this is a really um, kind of complicated but interesting uh, uh, situation with this case today. Um, this involved a 2011 law, as he said, that uh, was really aimed, according to the Scott Pruitt, the Oklahoma Attorney General, at banning so-called off-label uses of abortion-inducing drugs, which meant that if you were going to end your uh, pregnancy using RU486 and the other drug that's used uh, in that protocol, that you had to do it uh, in, in the protocol that was approved by the Food and Drug Administration about 13 years ago. And you couldn't use this, this kind of alternative protocol that's been adopted since then. So what, what the, the U.S. Supreme Court did today, though, was, was ask the Oklahoma Supreme Court to basically go back and do its job in, in, in analyzing whether this law not only banned off-label uses of these abortion-inducing drugs, but all uses of them. The, um, Oklahoma, uh, an Oklahoma coalition of abortion rights group claimed in their challenge that the way this 2000 law uh, was worded, it would ban all uh, uh, abortion using medication because it banned the uh, off-label use of a certain drug that is part of the FDA protocol. So the, Oklahoma, the US Supreme Court it has not even really gotten to the whole issue of, you know, can you use, you know, can you get to this alternative regimen of using these drugs before they decide whether the, the this kind of predicate issue of, of the, uh, the real impact of this 2011 law, because when the Oklahoma Supreme Court struck it down as unconstitutional, they really didn't analyze that question. You know, did, would this law actually have the effect of banning all medication abortion? So highly unusual in that in, in the way that the U.S. Supreme Court accepted this case and then turned around and told the Oklahoma Supreme Court, hey, you know, resolve this issue for us. It's in dispute. So the high court's current term ends this week, and if they've yes. sent it back down to the Oklahoma level, could we expect the Supreme Court to take further action in this case? Um, it, it's going to be, you know, easily into the next term, which begins in October. And they gave the Oklahoma Supreme Court no deadline for uh, answering these questions. I mean, I assume, you know, the Oklahoma Supreme Court will, will act with some, with some haste. Uh, in, in trying to address this, but there, there's really no, so we don't know really when, when, the Oklahoma, when the U.S. Supreme Court will get back to this. Chris, I'll get you out of here on this question. There was a separate abortion case from Oklahoma. Uh, will the high court review that case as well? They, did, they took no action on that today. That was interesting. They, there was a, another Oklahoma law that was struck down by the Oklahoma Supreme Court, and this one would have required an ultrasound. Uh, women seeking an abortion to, to have an ultrasound first, and um, uh, that, that was struck down, and, and, Scott, and Attorney General Scott Pruitt wanted the, the uh, U.S. Supreme Court to review that one as well. Well, they made no decision on that, so that, that we may learn um, in the next term uh, whether they'll hear that case. They didn't reject it. They just didn't accept it either, so it, it, it will probably uh, be back before them sometime uh, next fall. And I'm assuming Scott Pruitt was fairly pleased with the first decision here. Yeah, it was a, I think it was a big victory for him. Chris Castile with some analysis and some, uh, some perspective. Thanks so much for your time today, sir. Glad to do it, Dave. All right, read more on this story in the Oklahoman and online at newsok.com.